Now, how many of us getting past this, how many of us have just kind of seen something like this in general where people are just involved so much in their device that they kind of are oblivious to the moment around them? That for, uh, is a term that we call technology distraction. Technology distraction occurs when the appeal of our digital devices, you know, social media, uh, the websites we visit, the apps we use, when the pull of those devices are so strong that it takes us out of the moment we in and it, the moment we're in and presents us from focusing on the task and the people around us, often to our detriment. That's kind of the scope of what technology distraction is for us today. Now, before we go too far, let's make sure we understand what we mean when I use the term technology, because technology can be a new jet engine or it could be the new smartphone. So let's be specific. For the sake of this discussion, what we're calling technology is, most, is how most of us interact with it every day. So that would be smartphones, uh, social media in all its forms, Facebook, Snapchat, WhatsApp, whatever you happen to be using, Twitter, things along that line. That also includes the cloud, or what you've seen on commercials referred to as a cloud. So Netflix streaming, Hulu, Dropbox, if you're using it to store files. That's also technology. And lastly are the devices themselves, be they laptops, you know, virtual reality, if you're into that, your tablets, Apple Watch. All these together, the consumer interface, the technology we use every day, that's what we're referring to as technology. Now. When does this type of distraction happen? Well, uh, again, as we mentioned, we've all kind of seen it, but frequently happens when we're with other people or we're giving our attention to a device and not a person. I know for me, and I can own this, it often happens when I have work to do. How many people have, it's like, okay, I've got to write something or I have to pay my bills online or whatever you have to do when you're sitting down at the computer to get something done, and then oh, you get that alert. Oh, so and so just sent me a message. Let me take that. It's like, or you know, the worst thing. All of a sudden, what was the guy? The name of the guy who starred in that movie from 1993, Armageddon? That just pops in the back. Oh man, I gotta look that. <laughs> so for some reason, things that you that have no importance because you have access to them in that moment become super important. And next thing you know, you look up. 40 minutes have gone, and you haven't gotten any closer to writing what you're gonna write paying the bills you were supposed to pay, but you were all into the movie Armageddon. That's technology distraction. And lastly, I don't know if you can see that in that last picture there, that's something of particular importance to us. It occurs even in church. You know, let's say you've got your Bible app out and you're flipping to whatever scripture it is, and then blah, 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 you get a mess new message alert. Or, uh, so and so, uh, you know, alert that somebody shared something on Facebook, or somebody sends you a text message, or something like that, and you're looking like, man, they know I'm in church. Why are they? Well, let me just see what. Something that easy, something that quickly can pull you out of that moment of worship. So, technology distraction occurs at all of these times. Now, having said that, now that we know what it is. And now we know when it occurs, just, all right, blink if any of you are distracted. Okay, no names, no names, no names. It's just, just we're, we're here to have a discussion, right? That's what people do on the cutting edge. We have an honest, frank discussion. There ain't nobody else here. All right, now, if we are distracted, the question is, why do we allow ourselves to become distracted? And that was the question, you know. Again, we talked about it, sitting down at a computer uh, when you're trying to work and you get distracted or talking to someone. It's like, man, I wish this person, oh no, I'm listening, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's messed up. Hold up. We've either seen it we've, or we've done it or we've had it done to us. But, if you are distracted, why are we distracted? And this is um, gets into the meat of what we came here to talk about. We allow ourselves to be distracted, and that allow is an important part of it because these devices 
aren't doing something to us. We have to be own the choices that we make. We we have to own the choices we make when we use these devices. Okay, so given that, given that truth, we choose to be distracted by our technology based on the appeal of what we call the virtual playground. Now, what's a virtual playground? A virtual playground is the collective name for the websites you visit, the apps you use, the social media services that you frequent. All that quick, quick uh, answer to that question. When you pick up your phone or when you open up your browser, where's the first place you go? Some people, me speaking for myself, I love audio equipment. So there, I know there are a couple audio nerd websites. Oh, let me go see what's going on on, uh, you know, speakergeeks.com. Let me go check that out. And then after speakergeeks.com, it's like, okay, well, let me see what's going on in the news, CNN. And everybody has their circuit, right? Everybody has the sites that they go to whenever they pick up a device. That is your virtual playground. Whether it's a site, whether it's an app, it could be a game on your phone. All of that encompasses the place that you go when you pick up your device. That's your virtual playground. And what's unique about it is, and it hasn't existed in mankind before, it's persistent, meaning it's there 24 hours a day. You can't finish it like a book or a magazine because it's constantly being updated. And as we'll get into later, it actually adapts and changes based on what you, how you interact with it. So if I go to mediatakeout.com and I'm just have to know the latest going on with uh, Kim Kardashian, and so every Kim Kardashian uh, post I click on, or even guess what? The next time I come, they're going to have more Kim Kardashian information in there, and we'll get into how that works and why that works. But so the virtual playground is so critical to understand because nothing like it has ever existed before. Content that adapts to us never runs out and is available anywhere we are, whenever we want it. Now, what's the difference between real life interactions, and when I say real life, I'm just talking physical, face to face. What's the difference between those type of interactions and the virtual playground? Well, real, real things, real interactions are great, they're fun. But like a birthday party, or having dinner with your family, or sitting down and watching a movie, they're great. But they have a couple of flaws. One, they don't always turn out the way you want them to. You sit down and have dinner with your family, but if your wife had a bad day, she might not want to talk. And he's like, hey, I want to talk. Okay, or she might want to talk about what she's dealing with. And I was like, hey, I want to focus on me. <laughs> you know, I had a really great day. I want to talk about it. I don't want to yeah. So those real type experiences can be really great and really fulfilling, but they also can be very, they can also be a mixed bag. You don't know what you're gonna get. They might not be focused on you. You might need to be there for someone else. So, oh gosh, that's work, I didn't come here for that. And lastly, they rarely occur when and where I want it. If it's three o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden I wanna talk speakers with somebody, guess what? Face to face, that's gonna be kinda hard to pull off. Now, compare those real thing experiences to the virtual playground. Virtual Playground is always about me. It's always about the information I want when I want it. It's always new and it occurs when I want, wherever I want. Social media, if I can all, the people that I'm friends with, the people that I'm connected to, the people that I follow, they're always there. I can always see, oh, what's so and so from high school doing, boo? Or, the weird person from my school that I really don't want following me, guess what, I can block them. I can always have it my way in the virtual playground. So when you compare the two, you know, real life, real things to virtual playground stuff, it's kind of hard frequently for the real things to keep up because the virtual playground is all about me and all about the things I want. So that makes it pretty appealing. Now, and again, takeaway, the interactions in the real world have frequently have a hard time competing with our virtual playground. 